Hello, welcome to the Single African Market Program, uh, the program that brings you all actions around this journey of Africa integrating its market. And uh, we have so far brought to you 52 uh, episodes, that is 52 weeks so far continues bringing you and telling you the stories around this journey of Africa to integrate its market. And that also means exactly one year since we began this program. You can always visit our social media platforms, the uh, YouTubes, the Instagrams and all of that, the Facebook, and uh, watch the previous editions and get yourself uh, familiar with this particular vision and this particular journey of Africa integrating its market. Now, this is why that is important. The uh, continent's ministers of trade and industry. So we have about 50 ministers of trade and industry on the continent of Africa gathered here in Accra, uh, the commercial and trade hub of the continent of Africa, this week, deciding the faith of the continent to commence commercially meaningful trading here on the continent of Africa. So by the end of this week, we should be telling you or the continent should be aware when one can move goods from one region into the other without paying duty. So move goods from, say, Ghana or Nigeria to, say, Cameroon, which is uh, uh, in a different region, not West Africa, or to South Africa, which is in a different region, or to, say, Kenya, which is also in a different region, that is East Africa and be able to trade without impediment, without barriers. We are expecting this good news coming from the uh, Council of uh, Trade Ministers as well as the AFCFTA Secretariat. By the end of this week, we will be telling you a lot more about this in our next episode. And there is also something important, a, a significant assignment at the single African market uh, together with the AFCFTA Secretariat and then the National AFCFT coordination office we are going to embark on we will tell you a lot more about that as well in the meantime the Africa world trade network has been launched here in Accra with a call on private sector to embrace the vision of Africa to integrate its economies listen a pan-african business networking events and exhibition platform dubbed Africa World Trade Network, AWTN, has been launched in the capital of Ghana, Accra. AWTN, recognized as a strategic partner of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA Secretariat, challenges itself with an ambitious agenda of accelerating intra-Africa trade and industrialization. The launch was held under the theme, Showcasing Africa's Industrialization Capacities. The organization, according to the board chair, serves a unique purpose of exploiting public-private partnerships to generate the investments that will boost sectoral growths in the areas of agribusiness, automobile, pharmaceuticals, logistics and transportation, digitization, and other critical areas needed to spare the transformation of the African economies. With the right partnerships and support from both private and public sector actors. AWTN is determined to create an entirely new network for development on this continent. And in fulfillment of our commitment to us, after we have done two things. First, we have designed a truly private sector led Pan African platform that industrialized Africa for. The keynote speaker for the launch, Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Tremating, in a speech read on his behalf by the Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Michael Ochebefi, stressed the relevance and impact of the partnership AWTN has with the AFCFT Secretariat and the collective interest the two organizations have for Africa's industrialization. The history of the African continental free trade area cannot be written without giving credit to the private sector of Africa for the significant roles you have played in the establishment of this single continental market. On his part, the Secretary General of the EFCFT Secretariat, His Excellency Wam Kilimini, reassured businesses, particularly small and medium scale enterprises across the continent, of the Secretariat's support in promoting the agenda of a single liberalized market. 
Yes, the AFCFTA is about the nuts and bolts of trade rules, the agreement that has been negotiated. But actually, it goes beyond that. It is Africa's economic development tool. Other dignitaries stress the need for intra-Africa trade. The biggest hiccup to trading within West Africa remains transport. You don't have rail lines, you don't have shipping connections, you don't even have appropriate and enough airline connections. So I would say that we should, as Africans, look at how we can integrate our transport system. 2019, we imported $16 billion worth of pharmaceutical products. That means that we as a continent exported $16 billion worth of jobs, innovation, competitiveness, and of course, uh, we compromised in the process the public health imperatives of our continent. In these examples that I've just cited, you can see how Africa loses along the value chain as a result of not being adequately industrialized or not having the, the tools that are required to accelerate industrialization of our continent. Representing my president and the government of Rwanda, the birth of AFCTA is an answer to us. Sometimes I, when I wake up, I ask myself, why me? Why now? Things are aligned for us. Over six decades ago, our forefathers were fighting for the liberation of this continent. I think they set the foundation. But for us to realize it, we must draw from within. We have so much potential, but for it to be realized, we have to go the extra mile of removing the barriers. So African investors are being called upon to embrace this whole vision. Now, the vision is that let us be able to move our goods from Ghana to Namibia, Ghana to Lesotho, Ghana to Zimbabwe without paying duties, without meeting impediments, so that it would allow us as Africans to be able to add value to our raw materials, sell them within the continent of Africa and trade among ourselves. The monies will stay here and we will be able to boost our economies and better the lives of our people. This is the whole agenda. Private sector says they are also embracing this particular vision. The International Chamber of Commerce is the world's largest association of business. They have about 45 million businesses across the globe. Uh, the Ghana chapter uh, this week held a golf tournament bringing together businesses in Ghana, businesses in West Africa. We had Pricewater house coopers from Nigeria, Pricewaterhouse coopers from Ghana. We had uh, MTN in Ghana. We had quite a number of companies representing at the golf tournament, trying to connect among themselves, looking at how best they can expand their businesses on the continent of Africa uh, in response to this whole continental integration agenda. After four successful tournaments in 2017, 2018, 2019 and 2021, the fifth edition of the World Corporate Golf Challenge, Ghana Final, was played at the celebrity golf club Sakomono with the vision to bring businesses together to network through the game of golf in Ghana. The team from Calwin Unisex Saloon, Constance Awuni and Wang Liping won the 2022 World Corporate Golf Challenge, Ghana Final, organized by EXP Agency for the International Chamber of Commerce. History was made when Olushegu Adekoya of PricewaterhouseCoopers, Nigeria, hit a hole in one. The corporate organizations believe that the oncoming of a continental policy, such as the AFCFTA, requires businesses to now network more than ever. Sponsors include PricewaterhouseCoopers Ghana, Onyx Ghana, Specialized Ghana, Brussels Airlines, CAGL, Tank Palace Hotel, and media partner 
is the single African market and the business in Financial Times. The lead sponsor of the tournament prize, Waterhouse Coopers Ghana, presented the winning trophy and the ticket to the world finals at the Costa Digi in Tenerife, Spain from the 17th to 21st of October. Other competing companies include MTN, KEK, Calbank, Stambic Bank, CAGL, Retired Inc., Kitec, Yabo Services, Map Shipping, Ecobank, SKF Limited, Golden Gate Hotel, Chemical Limited, Ghana Manganese, amongst others. The winners qualify to represent Ghana at the world event to be staged in Spain from the 17th to 21st of October 2022. That was a golf tournament organized by the International Chamber of Commerce, the Ghana chapter, uh, bringing together businesses together, connecting among themselves, planning, uh, you know, in that casual manner to be able to connect among themselves and do business across the continent of Africa. So we spoke to one of the businesses that sponsored that particular event, that's PricewaterhouseCoopers. They have uh, offices spread across about 32 countries on the continent of Africa alone, doing business, providing services uh, in all manner of areas across the whole of Africa. Listen. We are a professional services firm. We're quite well diversified. We do audit, we provide tax advice and tax compliance services. So for example, if you're trying to move into another country in Africa and you need to know what the tax landscape is, what the compliance requirements are, that's something we can assist with. Correct. If you want to set up a company in a different ge geography, that's something we can assist with. Uh, and then we do uh, general advisory services, could be financial, could be human uh, resource related, could be technology related, it, pretty much anything that facilitates business. Yeah. That's the kind of professional services that uh, we're into. So again, if you talk about uh, African, intra-African trade, then it fits naturally uh, with the skill sets that we have in the business that we've been doing. Yeah. So all of this just simply goes to uh, enhance uh, what we do, yeah. but not just what we do, but what we do for our clients and what our clients in turn can do for the different countries in which they are based. If you look at this particular tournament and this event, to what extent does that help your likes and your kind of businesses, you know, to be able to foster and boost the intra-Africa trade that we are trumpeting now? Well, for us as PwC, it's a natural fit because we are present across Africa. In fact, we have a network in 32 African countries. Oh, really? And where we don't, and that's where we have a physical presence, a physical office. Okay. Where we don't, we also cover those territories from some Digitally. of our neighboring offices. Well, okay. physically if necessary. So we can travel in, support clients um, as, may, as may be required. Okay. So we are very particular. We have a strong presence in Africa. So trade within Africa is very important to us. Because yep. we, again, okay. because of the presence we have in different countries, if you're in Ghana, let's say, and you're trying to do business in Kenya or in East Africa or in Southern Africa, uh, we can provide that knowledge and expertise because as you probably uh, know, business is about what's on the ground. The practices, the regulations, uh, the basic custom, customary ways of doing things. And we know that because we have people on the ground. So this is something we've actually been doing uh, for quite a while, working okay. with clients who either want to come into Ghana or other parts of Africa or want to go out of Ghana into other parts of Africa or from one part of Africa to the other or one yeah. part of the globe into Africa. So it aligns naturally with what we've been doing okay. uh, quite successfully for quite a while. I think uh, one of the things they are working on quite uh, uh, aggressively uh, that we are aware of is ensuring that there's some sort of harmonization between uh, systems, between regulations, uh, between um, legal environments, etc., etc., and all of those things we encourage because we think these are the things that will ease trade flows across the continent. Price Waterhouse Group has believed that with the AFC, FTA and coming together as group of companies in that manner through the tournament organized by the International Chamber of Commerce, they are preparing themselves to embrace this whole vision of the continent of Africa to integrate uh, its market. And then the African Investment Group, a very, very important investment group that's also making waves on the continent of Africa, already representing in quite a number of African uh, countries and ready to take the rest of the continent by storm. 
once we have AFC FTA. We African Investment Group, uh, we're a private equity, capital raise and investment banking corporation that are working across the region. Um, at the moment, we're looking into the tech space, that's a technology space because we believe that's a mainstream for our economies to grow if yeah. we really want to grow as African economies. So we invested heavily into that sector of field. And we partnered with Onyx at the moment and we built the first tier four data center outside South Africa. And we're looking to have footprints across the whole region. Okay. We're currently operating and looking to build in Abidjan. We far advanced with plans to build in um, Dakar. We, 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 we're talking to Noak Shaw, DRC. So basically, we're trying to have... You're making waves on Absol the continent. Absolutely, absolutely. Interesting. Build tier four data centers across the region. Interesting. At the same time, fund and look into projects that we can invest into. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about intra-Africa trade, Africa connecting uh, um, um, among its nations and its people and all of that. To what extent is this drive helping your, your business uh, as a service provider across the continent? Absolutely. I mean, even... As you know, prior to uh, after coming to stay or coming to existence, it was very it was very difficult doing business in the continent and several barriers in different countries. And if you look at the Western economies like Europe and other places, it's grown because of the size of the market. We didn't have that. Yeah. Every one of us we're doing our own little thing. I think so. I think after it's a great idea. It's a good opportunity for businesses to expand and have the right market they're looking for. And we're fervently pushing to make sure that this comes to stay and basically have the effect of what we're looking for it to do. What's your vision? To what extent do you want to capture Africa with what the area that you you, you operate? Uh, you already in how many countries in Africa? Like right, about four or right five now, you mentioned? Right now we're in six countries already. You're in six countries. And where, where, where do you want to hit? Well, I mean, we'll, look, I'm looking to wake up next year and my, we have footprints in every part of the continent. That is the objective. Because our, our business, our services cut across all the spectrum of economies in, in Africa. So we, we, can, we can be in any part of the world or any part of the um, African economy. So we're looking to have footprints across the region. Yeah. That's the objective. That's the plan. That's the vision. That's Great. what we're looking at. That's Great. what we're Africa Investment Group. Great. We, we, we have the AFC FTA. The implementers are fervently working towards starting commercially meaningful trading across Africa so that you can be able to offer your service in any country that you wish to offer your service. What do you expect from this AFC FTA agenda? If you've ever sat in a vehicle, not an official vehicle, traveling from even Ghana to say Nigeria, yeah. you see the stumbling blocks. Yeah, yeah. It's the barriers not, are too much. It's just too much. So we're praying and hoping that after we'd we'll be able to remove these barriers and create that kind of platform so we can have a level playing field and have a bigger economy to operate our businesses. And the International Chamber of Commerce themselves believe that this is the best time for all businesses to be getting together. The World Corporate Golf is uh, one way of bringing the world of business together. So um, locally, it's also one platform to bring uh, the business community together. Uh, for us to network, it's one major ICC networking event and uh, most companies look up for it. Um, we had the first one in 2017 and uh, this is our fifth year uh, organizing the Ghana Finals. And then uh, the winner part gets the opportunity to participate in the World Finals uh, uh, in any venue uh, um, that, is, uh, that wins the bid to host the okay. finals. Uh, last year we were in Portugal, this year we're going to Spain. Okay. And to what extent is this connecting businesses on the continent for you? Because I see today uh, PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers Nigeria, uh, I see PwC uh, Ghana, I see other businesses. For you, how is this connecting African businesses? We all get caught up with our jobs and our businesses. And, uh, and on a good weekend like this one, it's one good opportunity for us uh, to just keep things a bit cool and then relax and then share ideas uh, at a major tournament like this one, as you just saw. And uh, it's also one platform that ICC actually used in uh, launching our new logo and our new brand. Uh, we make business work for people every day, everywhere, and with everyone. So um, you could see, uh, um, it was launched globally but on the 
African continent and in Ghana, we used uh, a major uh, golf event to okay. launch our new brand. Yeah. So as governments and policy makers and uh, implementers of the continental agenda of uh, the EFCFT are calling on private sector to embrace the vision, as you saw the International Chamber of Commerce leading the way, uh, bringing together the private sector, businesses, corporations that are, are operating on the continent together to reorient and orient themselves to embrace this whole vision of Africa to integrate its market. Now, the International Chamber of Commerce says uh, they are even looking inwardly to correct a few things that they want to uh, see as far as their look and feel uh, on the continent of Africa is concerned. The International Chamber of Commerce is tweaking its logos, uh, making their brand a lot more visible, a lot more attractive, and making it as professional to embrace the new wave of business that is blowing across the continent of Africa. They have rebranded their logos, folks. We realize that uh, uh, as a global institution, we needed something quite similar to that of the UN or the Red Cross, uh, and a logo that speaks for itself. I realized uh, earlier on, uh, most people were getting, us, uh, were getting confused whenever they have to address us because you see Ghana International Chamber of Commerce, but we are not Ghana International Chamber of Commerce. The Ghana comes after. We are it's ICC. a chapter of the of ICC. The global body. Yeah. So this logo is now made it very simple. But most countries were complaining. But with this new logo, you see ICC Ghana clearly. And then, you know, you're dealing with the, the National Committee of the Global Body. You used to have the, just the ICC and they were regular INC. You used to have Ghana on top. Okay. The International Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And now you now have... the Ghana is underneath, which, okay. which is better. Okay. But where from this? Because I because wasn't seeing this as well. The actual name is ICC Ghana. Okay. But the previous logo had Ghana, Ghana International. ICC. So a lot of companies, when they were they have been writing anything to us, okay. will mention Ghana International Chamber of Commerce. Okay. So now the but main change is that Ghana has come, come down. down. ICC, ICC is on top. So it's ICC that, Ghana. Because good. that's our name. Good. Yeah. Uh, and what about this symbol? It's the same ICC. ICC. But, uh, it's 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 well represented in this way yeah because um we're looking at other logos like that of the red cross they wanted a logo that could speak for itself yeah you know you don't need to explain, explain it, it. Yeah. so we see an i we see a c, c and, a and a c, c yeah. so that's icc yeah, yeah. and here you come with the icc, ICC and then you come uh, with yeah. the country so, so if you have icc uk you have uk, UK down there yeah. icc us you have us down okay there. so all the countries will be down there you have a couple of uh, uh uh countries that you 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 are yeah, we, representing we have right uh, national committees all over the world i see icc canada icc kenya icc nigeria with this new look and all of that, here in Africa, on the continent of Africa, where is it taking you? Where do you hope to get with ICC? We expanding. It's, it's apart, you know, ICC has different uh, functions and different institutions within the global body. There's the World Chambers Federation, where all chambers around the world are part of the World Chambers Federation. And then you have the ICC International Court of Arbitration, which is also on its own. The National Committee deals with policy advocacy. And our advocacy usually looks at issues affecting businesses globally. So we weigh uh, the impact of COVID, we weigh the impact of climate change, we weigh even the impact of uh, sanctions and wars uh, currently. We weigh the negotiations between uh, countries uh, with other international bodies. And currently we also work, currently we're working with World Food Programme. We're working with PwC, our partner, who uh, supported us in organizing this tournament. Uh, we're both partners handling the uh, private sector uh, facility, uh, which is also supposed to provide some kind of support for companies that suffered under COVID. So we're doing a lot, but okay. uh, we believe uh, with this uh, new brand, the network will grow stronger uh, and better.
And in the coming days, the AFCFTA After Policy Network, APN, will organize a state of the AFCFTA trading 2022 in collaboration with the University of Ghana Business School. A host of dignitaries will be speaking at the event. Let's now bring you the AFCFTA status for countries on the continent of Africa. The weather report for all African cities, the forex rate for the African market and the flight schedules that are leaving the commercial capital or the trade hub of the continent of Africa, that's Accra, Ghana, to the rest of African cities. So if you're one of the trade ministers who arrived from uh, any part of the continent of Africa and returning into your country, the schedules of flight next on your screens. So 52nd episode of the Single African Market Program and we have to uh, say a big thank you uh, to the AFCFTA Secretariat headed by the Secretary General, His Excellency Wam Kelimene, uh, for supporting and being behind this uh, program and making it happen for the past one year together with the entire communications team at the AFCFTA Secretariat headed by Ms. Grace Koza the one and only, also the National Coordination Office uh, headed by Dr. Faridatha, the Head of Communications and the uh, Communications Strategic Advisor, uh, Honorable Catherine Afeku. We say a big thank you for supporting and making this program uh, come the way of the public, educating and informing the public about the happenings and, and the actions around this journey of Africa to integrate its market. The second season is going to be more thrilling. Uh, it's going to be a lot more engaging. We may be inviting you to comment on the program. That is definitely going to be assured because we are starting the commercially meaningful trading. Uh, as you may have seen there, the Council of Trade Ministers are going to let us know when we are doing that latest by the end of this week. And so the second season of the Single African Market will engage you to find out from you how you are able to take advantage of the AFCFTA live interaction which you cannot afford to miss. I thank you for tagging along this program. I also thank the minister who is in charge of trade and industry in Ghana. Thank the minister who is in charge of information in Ghana. These gentlemen made it possible, together with their ministries, made it possible uh, to make this a reality, bringing this program uh, on your way. In the coming weeks, again, I have hinted together with the Secretariat, the National Coordination Office, we will be storming the rest of the continent, bringing you a lot more actions around countries trading among themselves on the continent of Africa. I thank you for watching and I hope to catch you 
in the next season of the Single African Market, Season 2. Now